this is Megan my day and um, just got back from a game this weekend and I started thinking I needed to do a uh, brief video on gear probably should have been my first one but hey what can I say my mind doesn't think in a linear pattern so first things first as I redo everything you'll need a derby bag this is my wonderful derby bag for right now and we're gonna dump it all out to help out here. All right. Normally I do keep some ibuprofen in my bag, just in case. Um, I'm anemic, so I do carry around oxygen stuff just to help my breathing a little bit. Chapstick, always need the chapstick. Uh, normally I carry around duct tape or electrical tape, which I lent to one of my teammates and told her to keep it. So I do need to add that to my gear bag. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to try to go from head to toe. So on the head, we need a helmet. Uh, there are several different derby helmets out there, several different more popular to least popular. Um, right now, I have a triple eight helmet. Most derby helmets, uh, the inner pads come out so you can actually wash them. Uh, your S1s have them. Uh, your 883 have them. Pretty much all of them have it where you can take out the inner side, wash them, buy new ones if they're just so disgusting that you have to just get new ones. Um, most of the time, the shells are all the same size and the insert is what changes it from extra small to extra large. Now the next thing I have noticed with helmets with most new girls or skaters should I say most new skaters uh, is not knowing how to adjust their helmet right. This is a pet peeve of mine because we all fall and concussions are a very serious injury and is a very common injury in roller derby. So Get our helmet. You need to have your helmet covering here. Best way, I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can. You can see how this is straight, right under my earlobe, angled, and this is where this adjustment needs to be on both sides. Okay, after that, then you're going to adjust your strap to make sure that it sits on where you can breathe a little bit, but as tight as possible. See how my helmet doesn't move much? That's what you need your helmet to be. You don't want it so loose that it's going to fall back. Now, if you don't have your adjustments right over here, um, luckily with my triple eight, they're not adjustable. They're already set perfectly. Um, but most of them actually have the adjustable, which I can show you because I'm sure I have more. Okay, I did. I got another one. This is the S1. This is my daughter's helmet, which is incorrectly positioned. So as you can see, we're going to put that on oh, the right way. Yep, yep, the right way. And go here. And you can see how it's not quite as too far below here and too far below here on the adjustments. So of course, you're going to go in here and you're going to pull this adjustment to be straight as possible for that front one and as angled as possible on this one all right we're going to do the same thing on this side we're going to make that as straight and pulled up so here we go there Yeah, there, there we go. Take me a second on this. Let's see here. Put it on. Of course, this is a little bit small because this is my daughter's helmet, but it gives you the idea. Now, see, it's exactly straight there. We have that exact. I need to get that straighter there. Here, here, here. Angle here. And then at that point, we are going to adjust the actual strap underneath the chin to make it adjustable to fit exactly the way we want it to.
Sometimes it takes a little bit of elbow grease to get these things moving. But it's well worth the time to make sure that your helmet fits properly. Here, here, here. I need about one more smidgen longer to make it work. I think I got it. Here we go. Here we go. Yep, snaps on. No movement. Oh, this actually fits me great now. See how we have exactly what I was talking about. Oh, see, you can tell this isn't quite right. But this is what we're gonna we are looking for. Is that look there and that no movement there. Okay? So on with the next piece of gear. Alright, gotta love the hair after the helmet. Helmet head, gotta love it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is your mouth guard. When I first started roller derby, I went to boot camp and I had no idea because I never played a sport that you had to wear a mouth guard that you actually can mold them so they fit you better. So depending on whatever kind you want to choose, remember you do heat them and mold them to fit your teeth. My favorites um, are more the sport ones, which let's see here where my mouth, got my... I personally do like the ones that are moldable, very thin. Uh, they remold several times. They're very thin, so I can talk pretty much normally with them in my mouth. Especially since Derby, you do a lot of talking on the track. So, you know, more you can talk, better off you are, I think, in my opinion. And they come in several different colors. Or you can just straight out and go to Walmart or wherever and get yourself a cheap one. Uh, just make sure you don't grind through them. That was my biggest problem with the, the cheaper ones is I, I grinded them even when I played. So I went through, even though they were only a buck or two, I still went through them once a month. So now we got our head, we got our mouth. Our next thing that you're going to need is when you're in Derby, when you play uh a game, you will have to either have a sharpie to put a two inch number across your arm or you're going to have to need some armbands. So whichever, my number's 44, so here's my armband. So we got to get that put in my, my bag. I'm going to put my mouth guard back in my bag. Alright, so our next thing that I'm going to talk about is in our elbow got, uh, pads. We need elbow pads. As you can see on mine, the little groove there, that's how this goes in. You pop it in, put it over your elbow, and you Velcro strap it in. I'm going to say get a nice, good, tight fit to start off with. Um, I have noticed with me on elbow pads, because you are moving, you are stretching, you are uh, the Velcro and you wash them, um, starts wearing down. So tighter you get it to start off with, longer they're going to last for you. Um, if you get a pair that, you know, are not so tight, uh, by the time you're done with all your Velcroing, your Velcro is going to get looser and looser and looser. And before you know it, you're going to be either taping your pads on or having to get a new set. So now we have our head. Our mouth, our numbers, two inches long. You can use in a WFTDA, you can use up to four numbers. You At one time you could use letters and everything else, now it's numbers only. So anywhere from one to four numbers is what you can use. Um, I personally is gonna suggest uh, bigger you have arms, larger the number. If you're very tiny, you know, you gotta remember you gotta get a two inch number on you, you might wanna go with the smaller number. But normally we pick numbers for significant reasons. So we got my elbow pads. Elbow pads. I got my helmet. I have my mouth guard. I have my duct tape. All right. Next thing we have in here is our knee pads. I'm going to suggest very much that on your knee pads get a good set 
uh, pay the extra money for a good set of knee pads because you do fall a lot in derby, especially when you're first starting out. Uh, you're going to have to learn your, your knee taps, uh, your sliding, your falling. You're going to fall a lot. You know, I had a coach once that said, uh, if you don't fall at least three times at practice, you're not trying hard enough. So, again, your knee pads. So, we got our knee pads put in there knee pads so we ah black sting ours are wrist guards we also need wrist guards so of course uh there's several different wrist guards out there me personally i'm kind of on the claustrophobic side so i do tend to like the wrist guards that only have the uh hard piece on the inside instead of the hard piece on the inside and the outside uh that becomes just a personal preference that you're just going to have to try around play around with and, and have fun with uh for me personally, my wrist guards are the ones that get the stinkiest. But yeah, you gotta have your, your nice, wonderful wrist pads to stop you from when you fall, breaking your wrist. Uh, just a necessary item that we have to have. So. so we have head, mouth guard, elbow pads, wrist pads, knee pads. Uh, extra things that you might wanna do and, and have, I personally like, um, they make different types is I personally use uh, turtle shells for my uh, boobs. Uh, they have turtle shells out there, which you can get in a martial arts uh, shop, online at Amazon. Um, they also have uh, now what they call shields, that instead of just being a cup and a cup, it actually shields the whole area up here for you. Um, whatever reasons, you may want to look into them. I like them personally because, <sighs> There's a lot of groping in, in derby, and I always get embarrassed, to be honest, when I have my hand, and I'm in a pack, and I'm holding, and I'm like, what the heck am I holding, because I don't want to be choking somebody, and I realize it's a boob. When I have a thing, there's no <gasps> uncomfortable feeling. Um, some people have nipple piercings. Highly suggest that on nipple piercings. Also in derby, you can do a sternum hit, that hit and that is totally legal. So, you know, these kind of help you on the, on the sternum hits. So, you know, it's an optional item. This is definitely not something that is required in any way, shape, or form in this sport. Um, also, a lot of girls will buy shin pads. Again, that is also another optional thing because uh, when you're skating, uh, you get low blocked in the shins, and it hurts. It hurts a lot. Uh, hopefully the ref sees it and calls it, but not always, uh, especially if you're a jammer. Uh, so a lot of people do that. And then a lot of people, optional, will do a uh, shield on their uh, helmets. Again, you'll see that mostly with jammers, but anybody can have a shield. I know my next uh, helmet, I am definitely putting the extra money towards a shield on it. Uh, that just kind of protect, protect, protects the, the part of your face because, again, that's a non-hitting zone, but... It's a contact sport. You're going to get hit there. Your fault, their fault. Either way, it may happen. So thank you for listening to our equipment check and what you need. Um, I'm going to do another quick video right after this of talking about uh, your basics of your skates. So I will see you later. This is Megan My Day. I hope you enjoy my videos. Please give me some feedback. Bye.